York, thank you for this. Here's your reward. The key. And what does this key open? It's the key to the closet in our garage. Closet? Yes, and there's something in there that's really valuable to keep. He says it's the most important thing in his life, second only to his family. I don't really see it in the same light. There are lots of other things in there too, and you can help yourself. Which means this wasn't related to the investigation after all? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to trick you. <laughs> I just couldn't think of another way to get you to help. You're quite a woman, Lily. Only you would be able to get me to clean up that storage room three times, but it's a good thing. Helping people out feels good after all. And we FBI special agents are all living and breathing heroes. Right, Zach? Thank you, Agent York. Don't let this stop you from coming by, will you? Keith and I both enjoy your company. Don't worry about that, Lily. I'll be back.
So this is Keith's most important possession. Second only to his family. Makes sense, I guess. Greco charm. Looks like quite a sturdy instrument. I hope Keith won't mind me using this in a more violent way. Hey, man. Keith, what's wrong? You're usually more upbeat. You really want me to drag you down too, FBI? Maybe I can pull you back up. Well, I've lost something, man. My most precious treasure in the whole world. Well, my most precious after my family. My guitar, man. It's gone. Lily said she gave it away. Gave it away? Can you believe that? She says it's my fault for not tidying up the storeroom. I don't get her, man. What kind of logic is that? I didn't tidy up the storeroom, so I have to lose my guitar? <sighs> you with me, right, FBI? Man to man, you see where I'm coming from. Your guitar means that much to you. Oh, uh, my meeting with that fine guitar is what led me onto the path of rock, man. It was back in high school. I made my first visit to Seattle. The world was tired of pop music, and people were crying out for a new sound. It was only a few years before grunge would explode out of Seattle. I met a true rocker there, man. He had the sunglasses, a biker jacket, and the long hair. Man, he even had a bandana. I mean, he was behind the times by then, but nevertheless, the pure white guitar on his back hypnotized all who passed him. In the midst of everyone wanting something new, I glimpsed a tradition that had to continue. That's right, it's called Rockabilly. You dig me, right, man? The world can't be built solely on new things. I couldn't help myself. I approached him and opened my mouth. I told him what I was feeling, FBI, right there on the street. I don't remember the words I use now. It was, it was like a dream but it sparked something inside me. I can tell you that. Our shared love of music allowed us to talk like old friends. Before I knew it, I'd been hanging out with this guy for three days. When I finally had to go home, what do you know? He gave me that guitar, man. He said that the soul of rock should be passed on to the next generation. That is how the legendary guitar Grekoch came into my hands. Well, thanks for listening anyway, FBI. It means a lot to me. Hey, bro! you find it? Lily gave it to me. As a reward for cleaning up the storage room. Oh, I see. Well, um, I'm happy to see it with you. Treat it well. I'll, uh, I'll just do the manly thing and, uh, forget about it. Come on now, Keith. I can't play it myself. Instruments exist to be played, not to become an ornament. What am I going to do with it? Use it as a weapon? That's not what it's for. You're the owner of this guitar. You should have it. Bro! Your story relit the burnt-out fire of rock in my soul. FBI, you're all right. Hey, just hold on a moment. Take this, then, in exchange. It's a gold card, our super discount card. There's no markup on anything we sell you if you use this. Uh, this, in a way, means I'd work for no pay for you, man. Are you sure? Of course, we're buddies, man! <laughs> yeah!
Potential, soldier. I want you to take a look around J-10. I'll need high gear parts. They should be around there somewhere. If you can find them and bring them back to me, I'll be able to increase the top speed of your vehicle. Now that sounds like a plan. It's a fail-proof plan, soldier. You must learn to trust your superiors. Around J-10, then. Your orders are clear. Now roll out! This is it. This will save your life someday, son. What's the story this time? Speed determines everything on the battlefield. Life or death. You're not going to tell me another story about stomach pains, are you? Son, I told you already. Don't mock your superiors. It's a very serious story this time. It starts with a question. Why did we lose the battle? We had firepower and the air support in the beginning. But looking at the results of a war of attrition, we learned a lesson. We lacked speed when speed was needed. It was our superiors' fault. We should have carried out a swifter attack. That would have saved more of our soldiers. Although crybaby Timothy was doomed either way. You really hated that sergeant, didn't you? Don't talk to me with that tone, boy. Words cannot describe how much I hated him. I was at war with a crybaby. No one has enough lives to survive that. He poisoned us with our own food. Washed all our weapons with soap and water. Launched a signal flare thinking it was a firework. Set off countless traps laid by the enemy. More than half of the unit had to return home sick because of him. I don't know how much of this to believe. <laughs> Believe as much as you like. <laughs> I'll keep my side of the promise and get to work on your vehicle. Well, if he hates that sergeant so much, why does he keep talking about him? And would a general really even have direct contact with a sergeant? Questions keep mounting. I've increased your exhaust and optimized your higher gears. That means you can drive at a faster top speed. But there's still plenty of stuff I can do to make your car go faster. Just come see me again and I'll customize your car a little more. 